one of the most successful and popular AWS services, AWS Aurora. If you want to manage Postgres or MySQL database in the cloud in AWS, then it's a no-brainer that you should be using AWS Aurora. And these days, it should be AWS Aurora Serverless. AWS has been offering Aurora Serverless for some years now. Earlier, they announced the version V1 of AWS Aurora Serverless, and these days, it is V2. This is a quick video to understand the differences between V1 and V2. And so if you're still running V1 workloads, how you can, if you should be migrating to V2 or if, which you should, but if you do, you should be aware of few things and need to adjust your database applications or even the Aurora serverless configuration accordingly. One of the thing with V1 is that it was a huge improvement on the AWS Aurora previous version. For example, it offered data API and data API offers an HTTPS endpoint to do the DML or insert, update, delete, or query data directly from the web applications. V1 also offered auto scaling. And if you, if you are running V1, it enables you to scale up or down automatically. You don't have to provision in advance and you do not have to rely on guesswork for these unknown spikes or downtimes in your database. Another cool feature was sleep. So it can be configured to go to sleep. Uh, and I mean the error serverless V1 after a certain period of inactivity, which means is that you only pay for what you use. And this is, I believe, uh, the core of the serverless that you should only be paying what you are using but it also means that your application need to be aware of this feature and they have to deal with the cold start because after the inactivity when your application tries to access the database again it will experience a lag and i have seen that sometimes it takes up to one minute or 50 seconds or Aurora serverless v1 to get formed up. But um, there were some pain points related to v1. For example, there was no multi-AZ support. So if something goes wrong in the region of your database, then your application will face downtime. AWS does guarantee no data loss due to failure in your zone because it is a physical different data center and fault tolerant and also a self-healing storage, but still, you should be aware of it. Also, there was no support for read-only read replicas, and you couldn't also export the data to S3 in the V1. So AWS released V2 to address these pain points. In V2, you can have multi-AZ, you can have read replicas. Um, so if you have, uh, in V2, you don't have to worry about downtime due to the failure in a zone. And uh, you can, um, so as I mentioned, you can have read replicas in it, but you cannot have data API or sleep in the V2. So you need to be wary of that and uh, that there might be some more cost involved because if there is no sleep option there, uh, but then again, your application don't have to worry about the cold start. One of the salient difference which I have seen in V1 and V2 is that if you just want to do a small POC or if your developers are running a development instance, then V1 was relatively cheaper than V2 because of the features which I have just mentioned around the sleep and stuff. So if you want to do a small POC or a very small database or a development database, then maybe, maybe V2 might be expensive for you. So think twice. But definitely if you are running a production grade 24 by 7 database in MySQL or Postgres, then V2 is a no-brainer. I hope this was useful and would help you in making the decision to use AWS Server Serverless version 2. If you have any comments or feedback, please put down below the video. Thank you.